Hey everyone, this is Mr. Isometric and in this video we are going to talk about transformation bone constraint. So let me first add in the armature. Let's go to the armature settings, turn on the name and axis. Let's make the axis position to be 0.5. Let's go into the wireframe mode, go into the edit mode, shift D to duplicate the bone. I'll press Y and I'll snap it one unit ahead. Now let's go into the pose mode, uh, select this bone number one and then let's go ahead and add the transformation bone constraint inside bone constraint properties so now that we have added the constraint the first thing we see that it is red which means that it is asking for the target now let's select uh, this bone as our target so i have selected that bone as my target bone now ignore all of this thing for now uh, let's concentrate on the core working principles of this constraint. So this constraint copy anything from our target bone to the bone on which this uh, constraint is on. So it will copy everything uh, that we assign to copy from this bone, the target bone to this bone, bone number one. And as you can see, it does that from over here. So map from and map to. So from is the target one and two is the bone on which the constraint is on right now. So if I try to move or uh, rotate or scale this right now, nothing is happening. By the way, just logical or you can say a technical term transform or transformation always refers to the three vectors, which is location, rotation and scale. So it is a combination of these three vectors is called transform or transformation. Basically, the first thing is location. And as you can see, we can select any of these three in both of the cases. Also, you will see that there is a drop down in which you can select an axis. We will get back to it later in the video. So first, let's concentrate on the location to location. So I want my um, location to be changed depending upon the change in location of the target bone. So suppose if my target bone moves from zero to one unit ahead like this, I want my this bone to also move from zero to one like this. And the way you do it is, as you can see, we are right now uh, in the global axis, by the way, because we are using world space. As you can see uh, in the X axis, we want it to be moving. So zero to one unit uh, now from. Uh, so if my target moves from zero to one, then I want my constraint bone to also move from zero to one unit. OK. So now if I move this on the X, as you can see, it is moving from zero to one. Nice. Now you see there is a extrapolate checkbox. Uh, we will. OK, if I check this now, uh, as you saw earlier that it is moving and it is staying in between those limits. So if I check the unable the extrapolate now, if I move this, it will move with me uh infinitely so it, it is just going to extrapolate it beyond the limit now let me just turn this off and uh, what if uh i make it such that my target move uh, target when it moves from zero to one my bone only moves from zero to 0.5 so like 50 percent of the movement so let's see what happens so now if i take my bone it is going from zero to one and as soon as it reaches the one unit the bone on which the constraint is it just moves zero to 0.5 so this is now starting to get a little bit interesting now let me check the bone and then let's turn on the extrapolate now if my uh, target bone when it moves my bone number one will always lag behind 50 percent like it will move 50 with 50 percent speed that's one way of using this constraint now suppose i want to do something different suppose let's say i want to move my target bone in the x but i want my this bone to move in the global y like this so what i will do is uh, select the constraint bone so when my target moves from zero to one in the x i want my y um, to actually take the data from the x axis of the target so as you can see, my Y just got hidden. And the reason why is that in the map two, we are not using Y anywhere. So that's the case. Now we want to move it in the Y direction. So as you can see, we want to move it in the Y. So uh, 
it doesn't matter what if you change this to y over here you'll see that it uh, unhides itself uh, you don't actually have to do it you can have multiple uh, data inputs over here so my x can source uh, x and my y can also source x at the same time uh, it doesn't really matter um, i'll just keep it like that so when my x moves from 0 to 1 my y like my the constraint goal it will uh, reference the x axis over there as you can see and it will move from 0 to 1 like this so now if i move my bone in the x direction you'll see that my constraint bone is also moving let me just turn off the extrapolate because uh, it will hinder with our uh, tutorial and understanding of this constraint so moving from 0 to 1 as you can see my bone is also moving in that specified direction now as i said multiple data like um, you can access the target bone like uh, the x-axis it can be assigned to all the three axes now um, and the reason why it didn't also move in the x is because it is set to zero now if i make this zero to one now it is going to go diagonally in this direction as you can see my x when it goes from zero to one the same data is going to be sourced by x and y axis so they both are taking the x and now it is going to move in both um, x and y axis at the same time with the same units by the way now as you can see 0 to 1 whenever it goes from 0 to 1 it is going diagonally in that direction now what happens when you suddenly make the y 0.5 so it will slowly move in that direction and suddenly you just get a different uh, diagonal movement so in the y it is just going 50 percent so as you can see it is now at y 0.5 from zero and my x is uh, one over there now this constraint a uh, it can go other way around as well so suppose uh, let's make this x let's make this y and let's make this z so suppose if this let's also make this zero so let's have simple example again uh, i'll just make everything zero again so now suppose if i make this um, let's keep this from zero and then let's make this 0.5 and let's make this as a one so now what will happen is my target bone when it moves from zero to 0.5 my uh, constraint bone it will actually move from zero to one as you can see my constraint one is going to move from 0 to 1 so let's see that in action so 0 to 0.5 and it already have moved to 1 so this can be inverted as well now this constraint is actually going to go more interesting and interesting because not only the location can be added to location but our location can also affect our rotation so you can see the possibilities like you can your location can also manipulate the scale as well in the same manner so let me make this from zero to one by the way you can put uh, over here like a negative number uh, for the minimum that's usually the practice that i keep or the minimum number of both so like never do this like make this five and make this one so like your minimum is five and maximum is one that will actually invert the inputs so it's a, it's a good practice to keep this uh, value minimum value smaller than your maximum value so i'll just for now keep this from zero and one so now if my target bone moves in the x direction from over here to here then i want my this uh, bone to rotate on the y axis so what i will do is i will select the rotation so we want its location to affect its rotation so target's location will affect the bone number one's rotation so we are moving in the x and i want to rotate on the y axis so i'll make sure that my uh, y axis it is its data is being uh, sourced from x um, uh, let me just make this y so that we have all three enabled uh, it doesn't really matter by the way again now i want to rotate from 0 to 90 degree so whenever my uh, this uh, target bone which is this bone it moves from 0 to 1 it is going to rotate on the y axis from 0 to 90 degree so let's see that in action so now i'll move it from 0 to 1 and as you can see endless opportunities with this constraint like super uh, fun constraint to use and so much you can do with this constraint um, 
I would like to see what you all make by learning from this video, uh, like the, solely from uh, transformation constraint. Um, but as you can see, like such a handy constraint over here. Um, so now I can also uh, make over here as negative 90. So when it is at the zero, it is going to be minus 90 right now. And as soon as it goes in the front, you'll see that I have this um, uh, rotation. Now to make it more interesting, let me just plug minus one over here. So it is straight now. So if I move it on the X like this, it is going to lean towards that bone. So really fun thing to do. Now let's test uh, it with the, uh, so let me make this zero. Let's make this Y. Like I'm, I'm just resetting everything uh, for the sake of the tutorial. So now my rotation can also affect the rotation. My, this, uh, my target's rotation can affect its location too. So if I rotate this on the, um, global Y now, let me try that. So if I rotate it 90 degree in the Y, uh, I want it to let's, let's source the X over here. So my X is sourcing the Y because I want to move, rotate my Y axis. Okay. And I want it to move on the X one unit. So whenever I rotate on the Y like this, you'll see that it is going the other way around. Now, suppose if I click extrapolate and try rotating it, it is just going to keep moving in that direction. And as you see, uh, it is just going to repeat that motion. Uh, really interesting uh, behavior over there. Um, let me make this minus 90 and let's see what happens. So, oh, interesting. So experiment with this, have fun. Um, now let's check from location to scale. So let me reset everything X, Y, Z. Um, so when my bone, this bone moves from zero to one in the X direction, um, I want uh, my this bone to be scaled up uh, twice. By the way, this is all set to one because if I set this to zero, then it is going to go infinitely thin. Uh, so uh, the minimum will always be set to one. So now if I set this to two, you'll see that my X is being scaling. Now it is scaling infinitely because extrapolation is turned on. Now imagine now my move, I'm, I'm moving from in the X direction, my target. So let's source every of the axis to the X. Uh, as you can see, Y and Z are not in the picture anymore. So if I select this uh, bone over here and then move it, you'll see that my target bone is scaling right now. Uh, also, I have to make this uh, two. Okay. Now, as you can see, my bone is scaling depending upon my position. Really, really awesome. Um, now, if I just check on the extrapolate, it will infinitely scale. So as you can see now, if I go in the other direction, it is going to scale in the uh, mirror scale. It will basically do a mirror scale. So really fun thing to use. And that's how this constraint works. Now, there is also one thing, which is this replace thingy. Um, now it changes depending upon what you had. Now the location, it is saying the add. So what add will do is whatever you had your bones. Uh, so this is my reset bone position. Now let's go back to the pose mode. Now, if I change this to add, uh, like if I have my mix mode to add, then whatever the edit mode is, it will add on top of it. So if I move this now, it is adding on top of it. But if I go ahead and add this to replace, now it is replacing the bone itself. Now you can't really see it. So let me just make this uh, 0.5. So now you will be able to see. You'll see that it is replacing it from its original, not the original position, but it is literally taking the position or data of my target bone. So you could use replace and then make the bones to go in local space if you want. And in this way, it will just behave normally the way it, uh, it is whenever it is in uh, the add mode.
so you can do that in the rotation i think it is uh replace add before original and after original um and in the scale i think there is replace and multiply yep there it is replace and multiply so do check this constraint out really interesting constraint so instead of using like a uh, copy location rotation or scale you could just use this one single constraint but the limitation is that it will only work with one thing at a time so like i could literally make a copy location bone constraint with this um so if i just add everything like this x y and z let me make it in the world space both of them so 0 to 1 0 to 1 0 to 1 let's make this uh, one as well and now if i move this as you can see this is a uh, copy location but it is now like it is confined right now and if you want to unconfine it just check on the extrapolate and this is basically a copy location right now so transformation constraint really interesting uh, you could animate this uh, extrapolate value you can uh, also use this influence to add a weight so like if you have stacks of this uh, constraint you can stack this constraint by the way um, then you can use influence to set uh, how much influence you want you can animate this value to turn this constraint on and off so i think that's how that's all the explanation there is for the transformation bone constraint after watching this tutorial i hope you also try it out by yourself to understand this constraint uh, more so yeah really interesting constraint uh, i'm talking about all of this uh, bone constraints video by video it will be available in a playlist so do check it out on my channel and this videos they take some time because i have to like work and then make videos with it but to make this a full-time job of uh, making tutorials for you all guys i need your support so for that please subscribe like and share also comment in the comment section for if you need any specific tutorials on something hope you all enjoyed and learned something i uh, hope this helps in your project thank you all so much for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye